and it's recording. And we have this thing on. Yes. So we go, we go for them. Yeah, we were talking about the Faroe Islands uh, and this club. I mean, to me, uh, Sura, even to me, mm -hmm. just because I live here in, in the northern part of Faroe Islands, this is remote. This island and it's, it, it is remote. Yeah. Yes. We're talking. <laughs> if I wanted to see you, uh, well, if I wanted to see you today, I'd ha I had to go yesterday mm -hmm. because of the time schedules. But the yes. both. Um, the thing is, what is it possible? What they're doing out there in, in, in this little pool? I mean, they have at this moment they have four lanes, 25 meter pool. Mm -hmm. They have a coach. They usually have problems with finding assistant coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't really have anything. Mm -hmm. And still, uh, I, I understand that you are a bit impressed by by the club. Oh, I'm very impressed. And uh, I mean, the question: Can they do it? They answered already with the with the success that they have. And um, we just have to ask: What is it that makes the success? What what is success? What makes it successful? At, you have the proof and the, uh, the answer right in Sudoroy. Um, you have a 25 meter pool, which uh, stands for many, many turns. So instead of just swimming, you have an athletic exercise after each lane, after each lap. You have to make a turn, you have a push off. That's already athletic. Um, then you have a coach that has to take in a wide span of different um, the different level swimmers and that means he has to have just excellent social skills excellent organizational skills and this is also what he's been showing and this is uh, this is what makes Jon actually the great coach that he is that he can foster good talent and lead them up to the to the world level world class level and then you have also because of this remoteness you have no distraction um, you are focused as a growing child, as a growing swimmer, you are focused on that was what's really motivating you and that's happening in that pool. And then of course, in the pool, you're together, you're a 12-year-old swimmer and you're swimming next to Paul Jonsson. Yeah. And um, of course, this is, it's makes him, it makes him very approachable. Of course, he's a very great, he's a great guy, great person, uh, very amicable man. Uh, so he's a, uh, um, he also is an idol for these kids, but they can reach him, they can touch him, they can say hello, and they swim with him in the same pool. They swim in the same water, and that's I think it's a very it's a great great um, power that is being released in that um, um, in that uh, in that setting, um, especially the remoteness. I'm taking my athletes into the far into the Swiss Alps where there is nothing. Um, uh, but training facility as simple as possible. Um, I've been on Cyprus where there is also very very basic training, um, basic training opportunities facilities. Um, but hey, if we look at it, it's after all it's our body that needs to perform, and we're not a machine. So I don't think that swimming or success in athletics is a science. It's more an art and you must be an artist to make it. I started thinking now when we were talking about this that in fact we have been discussing in the Faroe Islands that the idea of putting a 50 meter pool in Voavur mm -hmm. where you were on Sudro it was crazy because so few could it is an elite training facility everybody knows that that was the plan but still they think because of the elite that we have in the north it shouldn't be south there because too few people live there compared mm -hmm. to in the north Yes, uh, but but you uh, you think this is a, a a perfectly good plan to have it that remote? Absolutely. Well, I have not visited the north, but um, uh, you know where the success is coming from, and that's where it should also be at. Um, if you put it into a different setting, um, that may bring some other issues and some some other risks um, uh, of getting the the elite from where they actually grew, grown up with. I think the social setting is also very, very important. Um, and uh, it, this is a history, it's a story. Um, right now, history is being written with Paul. 
And it, I, I'm sure just between you and I and all the people in the, on this blog, um, I, I really think that uh, you, we all may expect very big history coming up in the next two to four years, um, even next to Paul. Paul has been already writing history for the past years, and um, I think it's a really a, it's an oasis, um, and I think the future will show us. And I think it's a perfectly great idea um, to set it where the history began, you know, this, this pool. And it's also what really impressed me was that uh, people, the people of this island are getting together to make this happen. I was having a talk with one of the citizens of Suderoy, and um, I thought that these islands, also because of the rough climate here, um, they force you to be more inside the house and have more social contact with, with your families and uh, with your friends. And um, this man said we're, that, uh, he's, that we Faroe's people are just normal people like anyone else. We also hate our neighbors, but if it comes to a common project where team effort is required, we all get together and we make it happen. And that's really very, very... Um, Uh, very interesting and very special, I think. I think. There's political pressure everywhere, but I think on the Suderoy Island, it's really to a minimum, and people are powerful enough to just focus on what the passion, what the heart is. Super. Uh, we are inside the pier now, so uh, we I have to find our car. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, home for, for this help. And, thank you. Uh, Hope to see you here in the Faroe Islands or, or out in the wide world, wide world somewhere. Yes, absolutely. I thank you guys and uh, thanks to uh, all the involved to make this possible. Super. Okay. Thanks.